good evening. Um, this is Basket Starfish, our language core. Uh, my name is Sarah Chiu. I'm presenting a research that I have been doing over the last 20 something to 30 years. And um, here is uh, the, my research that I'm doing and uh, the image of a basket starfish I'm trying to push out because I think we share one language core instead of a family tree, something like that. And all languages are related and we are all speaking part of the remnant of the original ancient language. So here it is the pictures. Uh, you will see that a lot of the uh, uh, tricks are all intertwined and because as long as you believe language family is a tree like then uh, we will always have that hierarchy and uh, I will also show you uh, the view of an Eastern uh, traveler and of course I'm female so I might be able to see things a little bit differently um, so uh, tonight I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how uh, the core sound of certain things. I have been talking a lot about um, the basic uh, the, from the weaving to the floor mat and also raising to the chair all about foundation and now human beings start to learn how to uh, build walls and uh, this is the formation of our urbanization our walls and our cities and today you are going to look at a little bit more about the core sound of the building itself and about the wall, about the earth, the soil, that uh, a lot of the language still conserve the sound. Okay, I'm going to start now with the um, with the with this week's slide. Um, give me one second. Okay, again, uh, I'm presenting you an East and West integrated view and because pictographs are uh, more versatile than a lot of the Western art scholars understood it and I think travel experience also can be very uh, valuable in providing different views than sticking to the pure theory of a Eurocentric view in the classroom setting these days and um, I think too much attention uh, has been paid to the grammatical structures uh, because uh, if you pay attention more to the sound you will notice that we share a lot of common sounds in speeches across cultures and um, in this research I use the sound that I base on is a Cantonese sound and also a lot of the southern dialectic uh, Chinese sound and but of course you, I will use Mandarin sound to show you the mutation sound as well and because so far a lot of the scholars have been using Mandarin as the base so uh, they won't be able to see a lot of the similarities because of that um, first of all um, I spend a lot of time living in very remote places and in those places I think I will I think I saw and heard uh, clearer than uh, when I'm living in the city and in environments like this when you only see the sky and all the basic uh, structure of of living, uh, you will actually understand things better. And uh, other than the roof and the mat, and you gradually see that uh, the wall is also a very important thing to protect us. And what binds this wall together are those uh, ropes and threads, and those are also basic survival uh, uh, techniques that human beings started uh, to learn at the very beginning so uh, in a sm uh, small uh, shelter like this I actually saw a lot of the un uh, meaning of all the earliest pictographs this is a Sumerian um, the, this stand for either the essence or actually the growth power of a reed so it actually stood for the plant itself the reed and then um, when the plant actually um, they used a plant to shelter themselves around something like this and that's actually become you see the sound very similar this is ski and this is ka or jia okay and then um, you will see that there are actually animals living inside because like animals living side by side with human beings you won't send the animal out there in the sun so the animal is also taking shade and this is Chinese right there and uh, this is 
actually showing also grass you know the basic grass you will see that it's pronounced as guy right there look at that gi and guy and this is uh, the Chinese word for ga or gu or also uh, in Mandarin it will be jia it's exactly the same kind of mutation like the Sumerian and this means home itself of course you know we actually draw the animal inside exactly like what I saw in in the desert and um, so you will see that you know the grass and uh, both cultures show the grass exactly you know with the same sound and also the home is also exactly the same sound it's just a little bit uh, difference in the in in the pictorial form but if you actually lived in a remote places like that all those pictorial form actually make senses to you of course gradually it can be a tent when you make them with animal hair and then uh, it also can change into a brick uh, house or something like that as we gradually change when technology advance okay so uh, first of all I want you to uh, give a I want to give a job to accepted thinking. The three basic human survival necessities uh, are the mat, the roof, and the wall were actually all made from the same material plant, you know. The little plant actually uh, dominate, you know, the survival of a human world. So a lot of the word, as you can see, actually started from that little G sound, the G word, okay? And then uh, without the technique in working with the plant fiber, like twirling, plating, and weaving, living was actually Actually impossible and a lot of the female power actually were hidden right there you know when you pay a lot of attention to the stone tools don't forget about all these things that actually help to um, do a lot of the things in order uh, for the men to, ab to be able to take rest and things like that so both men and women were, uh, has, should have equal position in the society when we develop our civilization so um, last week I was talking about uh, the corner of uh, the, the early buildings so as I said you know a lot of this ram earth buildings you know they pay a lot of attention to the um, corners for so somehow you know a lot of the early uh, pictograph they use the corner to mean the city and and um, we actually get the one of the pronunciation as O that's what, how your urban word came from uh, through Latin and and also the symbol itself become uh, means to be strong and for some strange reason hieroglyph also has a lot of this corner thing to mean either corner or the city and what you look at here is uh, actually we say cook is actually also a corner or the horn and this is uh, koi at the very beginning you know act, other than a, showing a district in, in living it actually means to hide and the other writing is also a man hiding in the corner for some reason hieroglyph also have the same thing right there as a human being in a corner that means hiding and um, both of them showing the corner and as if the ancient were very obsessed with the symbol of a corner so of course you know those corner were actually meant to uh, meant uh, to meant to be a war city and because so much attention was paid to build a strong corner so that hide is actually means to hide in a walled city so uh, you see the hieroglyph you know has this kind of writing uh, pronouncing this kit right there to build and then the Chinese uh, we have the same sound kin or kian oh, right there and then you will see that the Chinese actually maintain all those corner with the pounding right there and um, of course we are pounding ramped earth right there and then later on uh, as building uh, continues we actually have these words still at the beginning we pay a lot of attention to the corner still then we begin to circle us more and more then finally we circle it around the word uh, started as a state and finally become a nation and finally become a country so at the beginning it was made up of very small state and also become a big big country but um, I travel around a lot Lot, and then I saw a lot of ancient building and um, there is a uh, passage in, in the Bible Isaiah 28.16 it uh, actually have this saying uh, why is it that it sets a precious cornerstone a sure foundation if you look at it according to our understanding
finding now a cornerstone is at the corner. How can it be a foundation, right? But if you go back to the ancient world to see how they build, everything actually makes sense. Um, of course, you know, now you see building like this. This is just a symbolic thing saying, uh, you know, playing out the, what the Bible said, you know, Jesus at the cornerstone. So they put this stone right there. It doesn't... Uh, uh, pay any um, tribute to the uh, construction of the building but if I take you to the ancient building and you will see uh, this is a very uh, ancient tower that this is really the ancient cornerstone before they built in the ancient time it seems that they are actually looking for very strong outcrops of uh, granite or strong stone to actually hold the corners you know so they started to build from there so that's why they can call it the foundation because every uh, force is actually exerted on this stone and they started building up the wall right there and um, if you, I will show you some more pictures I get in the internet. You know, this is also a cornerstone that really takes on the force of the weight of the, the ram earth. This is a, also a picture in, of a ram earth wall. So you will see the, how much attention they pay to the corner uh, rock right there. So um, a cornerstone is actually not a symbolic thing uh, like what you saw earlier in, in that modern picture. A cornerstone is where... Uh, you give a reference to start to build. You can look at it as a corner, you can look at it as a base, a foundation, uh, and again you can look at it as a core because it is around this center that you started to build, okay? So it is very interesting the concept of corner, base and core actually all pointed to one single thing in your human concept. And um, the corner marker, uh, I wanted to show you uh, something very interesting as I saw in the desert area very remote places they seem to in Yemen they seem to have hold this very very ancient tradition of marking uh, a site you know a building site long before they started to build so if you travel in the middle of nowhere all of a sudden you will see this corner markers you will know that or someone someday will come to occupy this land this is actually a site a, a marker of a site um, you will see, I will show you more again, you know, out of the blue, you will just see all this corner marker right there. And even on the slope, you will see this, no matter how small they are, they will just mark right there. So even though you don't see anyone around for miles and miles, as long as you see this corner, you will see, know that this is someone's land that you cannot take and, and someone will come someday to build on it. And and I will show you, you know, at the beginning, all this corner, you know, that, that means strong, mighty, and also gradually to become a city. And then uh, the hieroglyph also, there is a, a mark like that. And they understood as a, as a seat, a place, or a throne. So I think this is actually doesn't mean a throne itself because you never saw a real throne in Egypt like that. It might just mean, you know, the, the corner marker that marks the throne of a kingdom and as such such as this you know so uh, whatever you saw either is from the above view or from the side view both of these markers were all men meant um, occupied site and now I go back to the building process and I already show you this a couple of weeks ago and then when the whole world started to build this is Chinese when they started to carry the clay to build and then the Egyptian also have the same uh, symbol to mean to work and then uh, the Sumerian uh, uh, actually share the same sound clay uh, the clay actually share the same sound but they use another symbol actually means to to press something together and also they have another symbol this is that definitely pressing the soil together layer after layer and actually means to work too so you will see that these words either they correspond in meaning and correspond bond in same sound and 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 in, in different ways right either in chinese sumerian or sumerian and hieroglyph so 
all of this, you will see that actually people share the same word when different necessity comes by. Uh, either you're describing a builder or either the farmer or the miners, all these people were doing similar thing. They were carrying clay or the ore, the mining ores above their head. So what you see is similar, but they know that there are differences. Either it's the clay for building or the clay for uh, for the, the field itself when you are farming. So um, I I will show you in the next two slides you will see a lot of the same sound you know before the building of Tower of Babel so the story of the Tower of Babel might have something you know uh, very true to history uh, it seems that we did share a lot of the same sound so don't pay a lot of attention to the grammar saying that we speak different language languages uh, what I'm going to show you you will see a lot of the same sound shared by different cultures and the Sumerian has this thing it is actually as uh, earth rammer that uh, you use to ram the earth together I already showed you a couple of weeks ago and then uh, actually it means to hip to pile and to encircle of course you know the end product is a wall itself and you have the, the uh, sound or da, okay and that means to bind to hold of course you know when you're building a very strong wall it's layers and layers of soil or mud brick right there and then the Chinese have the same thing you look at it this as lines like that and of course um, there are different times we have different meaning but this sound da, or da, actually uh, we have the meaning of repeating doing some things uh, continuously and, and, and repeatedly and the dam and the dumb is actually uh, mean you're hammering or pounding something you see all this sound are very similar and then uh, we have the word deep or dab deep or dab you will see that all these things are sh we are sharing very similar symbols right there and the layers of the soil it actually means to pile or to hip up something so um, also uh, this word clearly you will see the two uh, gate tower of a city wall and it means uh, it sounds as though though is actually a, a real wall or to block up something and then actually uh, the D and the T interchange the do and the to here right in Hebrew it actually also means the wall or the mount or the fence of the surround so you will see all this D and the T uh, mutation between different languages but uh, the sound actually were very very uh, similar and I show you a very ch uh, interesting Chinese symbol that you can see a pile of earth right there and then uh, another writing is gradually uh, another symbol took its place it's actually a real earth writing right there and now we write it like this it actually means the earth the soil the clay or loom or clump of the mud you know and uh, the sound will be to or to and um I write all this out to let you see that all the action involved with the working with the earth actually are also involved in English like tapping, tamping, stamping and stepping. All this either with your feet, you know, on the ground, you are all uh, doing that action of uh, pounding on the soil underneath you. And this is how, this was how the ancient built their foundation. And the Arabic tuba, actually all the words I'm going to show you has the same meaning meaning uh, earth, soil, clay or mud, okay? Tuba is in Arabic and then in Punjabi this is Indian language, it's Tauri, just, you just have to uh, look at the uh, word that I highlighted in red, the sound, the Tau, and then the Hebrew is Tem, you see this is actually very similar to the English tamping when you tamp the soil and then uh, the Uzbek, you know, which is a Turkic language is the two, two to Brock and then uh, Turkish is actually to Brock and then um, the uh, Croatian Croatian uh, interesting spelling is actually throw like this and then um, Maui which is uh, thousands of miles away you know in New Zealand is also tap right there you will see uh, something very very similar in your ears if you do not have the bias that we speak different languages you will see that a lot of these are actually very similar Somali in the north of Africa is Dubo you see Dubo 
to tau you see how similar they are and of course in english you have adobe you see have this dope and dope okay so and they similar and i will show you all this of course the engine starts to pound whatever either pounding the earth or pounding the seed uh, has, uh, to peel the husk okay so all these you know were sharing the same sound because they were using the same action to do their work so um I will show you also a bunch of words to have the similar sound to mean to thrash, to pound, to go, to trample or to cr crush as you can see from this picture right there. In Sumerian, they use a two-horn animal, but use the sound do, okay? And this is Chinese, you will see that we also use two animal head right there. And then uh, we have the sound do right there. Do actually means to thrash, to pound. <clears throat> also Hebrew, dush. In Aramic, duke, and in Arabic, duck. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. So you will see that these are all changing sounds. And in Sumerian, you start to have this piling up, uh, having the sound do. It also means to hip up, to pile, to spread out, to do something repeatedly. So I will show you a picture right there. You will see that this is a picture I took in Yemen and what they were doing to to uh, dry the mud clay, uh, mud brick. And this is how they piled up to make a wall. So you see all this to hip up, really. This is like um, the exact uh, painting of this right there. This is the piling up of the mud brick to make a wall. And then you will have this, uh, this is Chinese, you see three objects piling together. And then uh, we have the doi and dun sound right there. It also means a small mound or piling up of the earth itself. And then of course you, we have this stop and dip right there. And you see a while ago, if you look at this bow as this bow, as you look at this as this, and if this is just the action of the pounding. <coughs> this is just the action of pounding, okay? So you will see that the pictograph actually drew out exactly the same thing. So I will also show you how the um, um, a lot of the people in Africa as, and, st uh, and also Yemen are still working uh, with the clay like that. This is the Chinese word tin or tian right there. It means the clay of the farmland. Why? Because we are Afri agricultural society, but then all the other culture like the Arabic, the Aramic, the Hebrew, they still have the tin tin as the mud, the clay. Look at this, this is the same sound. Only there is a, straight, a, a slight difference in the mental concept because one is working with the field, the other one still use this as a, as a, as a building material. And um, of course, you know, I show you this uh, Adobe word. This is uh, what they, pile uh, to make a city and of course this is stop you see the similarity the sound is actually stays still stay and then in sumerian there's actually two more symbol actually they both means uh, to pile high and to mix and uh, abundance okay and this is chinese deep and dark for us sometimes you also other than piling up we also means abundance can you see the same thing happening right there in chinese uh, pictograph and also the sumerian it's as if you know they communicated in ancient time a long time ago so these are actually still being used you know in the chinese and then of course you have the word adobe right there the english word tem tap stem top and all related to work with soil and of of course the A right there as I show you English is uh, alphabetic writing is also ideographic because this A is actually showing the unseen force as the two horn animal as if the animal is pushing uh, something and uh, this is Chinese though it means pounding both of them means pounding and push and of course you know who, what this animal is you still call it a ram and you still call this ram earth in English so in the mental concept you still have that animal in your head the push of that two horn animal that is the energy that is unseen okay and um, I will show you how you build a city by piling mud high and also you know can you see how huge a building they can build just by piling up the, 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 the mud brick and of course the word Medina in, in Arabic means a city you will see that all this by piling up 
all those clay and as again you know the Arabic word Medina is actually from the word teen you know this is directly related by piling the mud houses you know they build a city but look at the Chinese you know we have the word teen right there and as I said you know the Sumerian has the same symbol means abundance and piling up look at how similar they are which contributed to the word Medina right there of course nowadays when you say Medina it is basically still exactly the same thing this is a picture of Hong Kong my city and as you can see uh, this is also piling up a tons of cement and stuff to make uh, uh, stories stories of buildings you know so basically we are still living under the same concept so uh, but uh, after building so many things I also wanted to remind you that I also see a lot of runes when I travel around this is where they said the kingdom of Saba of the Sheba is this is where the Queen of Sheba uh, went to visit uh, Solomon King Solomon and I actually uh, get to understand that things are easy to build but very hard to maintain and the other is that is there any reason or means to maintain or to build one thing is very important because when you build something you have to think of the maintenance cost and uh, also when the climate changes when people leave you see uh, no one is there to maintain the places two places also fall into ruin right there and uh, I saw a lot of also new um, uh, the, the picture you saw right there was thousands and thousands of years old but this one right there is just a couple of hundred years old you see it's already falling into disuse and then also um, this is from another angle you will see that they also try to build a wall to protect themselves but you will see that it's also crumbling down so um, I, this is a, a picture I show a while ago you know when I explained the, the changing of the letter H and uh, that means hindrance and, and, and hurdle and hatch and as you can see this is great wall of China and when you build a wall you really have to know when you build a wall you really have to know uh, how you maintain it if, uh, if you have a reason to maintain it so to build it is actually easy but uh, have you ever think of how to maintain something uh, the Great Wall of China and tons of this ancient wall to separate culture for protection they all ended up in ruins so I think this is a great lesson for us to learn okay so I will see you next time thank you